this afternoon we come to you at the campus of Clemson University. Quality women's basketball game as number five and unbeaten South Carolina is in town to take on their in-state rivals, the Tigers of Clemson. And there are fans here, plenty of Gamecock fans as well as the orange-clad fans from the Tigers hoping to snap a nine-game losing slide to the Gamecocks. And welcome to Clemson. Pam Moore joined by not one, but two WNBA champions. Elena Beard, who won one with LA three years ago, and Mike Tebow, who just won a championship as a head coach of the Washington Mystics. Ready to go? I'm ready to go back uh, out of the WNBA and into the college season full tilt now. And Elena, your first game? It's my first game, but I must say that it feels amazing to be back in the college atmosphere. It's been a long time. A uh, terrific player at Duke, a uh, player of the year in her senior season. But, Mike, let's talk specifically now about this game. And one thing South Carolina does really well is block shots. Well, the first five games of the season have been a block party for South Carolina, led by freshman of the year candidate Aaliyah Boston and by senior leader Makia Herbert Harrigan. The Gamecocks are averaging a whopping 12 blocks a game. The message to opponents has been really simple. Enter the lane at your own risk. Because they have done a whole lot of rejecting. As Mike said, 12 blocks per game. Their fewest they've had in a game is eight, and that was when they beat Maryland quite handily. And Aaliyah Boston leading them with four and a half blocks per game. Kobe Thornton, Elena Beard, probably the best player for Clemson. She comes off the bench. Yeah, absolutely. Kobe Thornton is the key to Clemson's success, both offensively and defensively. And it's obvious when she enters the game, the pace of the game and the energy of the game changes. I think in order for Clemson to be successful in this match, they have to get Kobe Thornton going early. And she says that she prefers to go off the bench, a preseason all-ACC selection. Kobe now in her senior season. And we are ready to go from Little John Coliseum. Boston, the freshman, jumping center against Tyler Bennett. And Ty Harris, the veteran point guard, gets it first. Boston takes no time at all. I mean, she's just a wonderful all-around player. This is a treat for us, I think, to come watch her play. Uh, certainly, as I said earlier, freshman of the year candidate nationally. But she just is good at both ends of the floor and loves to compete. Head coach Dawn Staley talked about how basketball savvy she is, and that's one of Clemson's issues, been turning the ball over, and they get an early one. Yeah, 22 turnovers a game is not a good recipe for winning. They've been trying to cut this down. That's a huge uh, key for them going into this game. Ty Harris setting things up, starting since she was a freshman. Beautiful pass to Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Well, a good start for South Carolina. Put some pressure on the Tigers. The last two days, I think uh, a huge focus of Clemson's practice is handling the pressure, working against press offense. Didn't work so well that time. Bree Beal forcing the turnover. Didn't take long for Thornton to get in the game. Absolutely. Minute three to be exact. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's been the question for, for Clemson. How well will they handle the South Carolina pressure? Um, and I think that's going to be the key to this game for them. So Thornton is in the game, number 44 in white. And is Clemson going to be in that zone? We expect to see it pretty much the whole game. And Thornton gets her first rebound of the afternoon, leading her team in scoring and second in rebounding again, coming off the bench. I think if Clemson can consistently rebound out of that zone, they'll have success on that defensive end. Tougher to rebound out of the zone? Tougher to rebound out of the zone, absolutely, but they have to become more consistent at it, which I think they will. Outside shot, just a little bit too strong off the hands of Zaya Cook, one of three true freshmen who start for Dawn Staley. That's one of them, Boston. No foul called, good defense underneath by Bennett. Boston's hurt. She, I don't know if she got hit. Uh, but she is, she is in pain coming up the court. Yeah, trailing, in fact, just got over midcourt. And now she comes off. Craig Oates, the athletic trainer, takes her to the end of the bench right away. After she shot the ball in that little scrum, I don't know whether she got need uh, or came down wrong, but she was in a little crowd surrounded by three Clemson players. Maybe I know both of those perhaps. Great defense by Bennett. Oh, yeah. looks like she stepped on uh, somebody's foot and got hit at the same time. Yeah, Thornton got her in the face on the follow through on the block attempt. Victoria Saxton, number five, a sophomore, is in the game. And Kiki 
is off to a great start. Herbert Harrigan now with four points and drew a foul. I thought she was one of South Carolina's most improved players last year. She's learned to be a better player inside and out. I thought she was a little bit one-dimensional a couple years ago, but she had to carry a much bigger load uh, last year after Asia Wilson graduated, and that's it's really helped her uh, take over the leadership of this team. I think she's also done a great job of just adding to her skill set offensively. You know, as you notice, she works the paint really well, but when she gets the ball on that low block, she has a reverse pivot that I think is, is somewhat unstoppable, um, but it's been unstoppable early on. So some pressure now from South Carolina. Out to that 6-2 lead. And another turnover. That is the third turnover and another chance for an and one. South Carolina coming out. And the pressure has really paid off. This is Amanda Butler's uh, biggest nightmare is these turnovers. Not only just turning the ball over, but live ball turnovers to turn into layups or fouls, and they got both on them. Maya Cook is a special player. She never takes a play off, and it's, it's, it's obvious in this play with the steal. This is the number one overall rated freshman class, and boy, they have not disappointed again starting three of those freshmen. And Dawn Staley's team out to a 9-2 lead. Last foul, by the way, was on Shania Mertens, and a timeout taken by Amanda Butler, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. So South Carolina off to a great start up 9-2 to two as we take a timeout. ACC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Food Lion, the official online grocer of the ACC. Welcome back to Clemson, where Amanda Butler's team is down 9-2 to two early to South Carolina. And, uh, Coach, they're just not getting a lot of shots, Clemson. No, I mean, when you only have two shots and three turnovers, that's a bad recipe right now. Um, you, you've got to try to get a good shot, at least to get a shot, 85% of the time in your possessions. Otherwise, you're going to be up against it all night. Thornton's third shot for Clemson. Her second is off the mark. South Carolina playing at a good pace. Ty Harris left all alone, trickles off the rim. Good box out for Amari Robinson, a freshman from Douglasville, Georgia, who will have what appears to be a really bright future. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot to say about her during her career. She can play all over the floor, plays both positions uh, up front, probably can play some guard at some point. Another. It was a great backdoor cut by Robinson as well. We noticed it in shoot around. That was something that they worked on in terms of the pressure release. Um, but if she hadn't traveled, it would have been a great play. And both of Amari's parents, as uh, they adjust the clock, both of her parents played college basketball. Her dad at Notre Dame, her mom at Providence. Her mom was the player. <laughs> Not that dad wasn't, but mom was really good. Herbert Harrigan off the mark, rebound to Clemson. See if they can get something started now. Kendall Spray, a transfer. Now, this is a team, boy, new faces for South Carolina, but there are nine new players for Clemson. Mm -hmm. Thornton gathered nicely. Calmed herself down after speeding up a little bit. Great composure on that shot. She'll be preseason all ACC performer, was a second teamer last year, averaging over 16 points per game and has not started any games so far this season. Coach Butler said she thought about starting her today but had a conversation last night, and Kobe said, no, I'll do whatever you want, but she still is uh, more comfortable now coming off the bench, even though she might not stay there that long. Inside, in traffic, the ball stays with Carolina. Clemson extending their pressure a little bit, full court pressure that time, trying to speed South Carolina up. Coach Butler says she just needs her team to kind of get better every day, trying to work in all these new players in a tough test this afternoon. Clemson, good job to force that turnover. 
team that got to the NCAA tournament last year. The year before, they only won one ACC game. It was quite a season for the Tigers. And Amanda Butler's first year, and that's a foul on Herbert Harrigan. Amanda was telling us this morning, you know, she said it kind of it sets a little bit different expectations. Uh, they probably in some ways overachieved last year uh, over expectations, and then you lose all those senior guards, and everybody expects you to be the same, and there's such a different dynamic when you lose three uh, senior guards. They take so much pressure off your team. Absolutely. Like, you know, um, I think Coach Beller also understands, as with any coach, they understand that this is a process and this is a challenge that she says that her group is up for, um, alluding to the fact that they have some of the best work ethic she's ever seen within the team. It's been fun watching them practice the last two days. They're full attention. They're, they're zoned in on everything. Uh, no pun intended. Um, but they, they, they just, they're, they're enthusiastic. And, you know, she calls out a play. They're into the next, next motion, next action. Um, now it's just a matter of kind of playing with some calmness, too. Absolutely. They'll get there with time. I mean, implementing eight new players is a bit tough, but this team is working hard at it. Team that has taken on the personality of Amanda Butler, who was a scrapper herself when she played at Florida for Carol Ross. It's translated, translated so far with success. There's the first of what we expect to be many blocks for South Carolina, but Clemson gets it back. Thornton, just a little bit too strong off glass. And the ball goes to the Gamecocks. Well, the lane's a little bit different without Boston out there right now, too. So I think that there's a little more optimism driving into the paint. And we have Boston going out a few minutes ago after taking an eye in the face. Robert Harrigan. Good second chance opportunity. And we see Boston on the bench. Her Herbert Harrigan now with six of South Carolina's 11 points. Horton with the miss from the outside. I love with Thornton taking that shot. You know, it's, it's, it's a shot on goal. She's capable of making that shot. Keep shooting it, it'll eventually fall, which will open up the paint for her team. And Thornton on the season coming in, shooting 62% from the floor, by far the best for her team. But the disparity in field goal percentage shooting is remarkable when you look at South Carolina's numbers in and out. Right now, South Carolina is not knocking down threes. And when we were talking to Dawn Staley, we asked her, you know, what would you like to get better right away? And she said three-point shooting. She said, we're going to need it over the course of the season. You know, in their last two games, they've actually shot an almost 50% clip. But uh, they haven't gotten a good start today. And that's basically um, the Clemson zone is going to dare. They're going to pick who they want to shoot right now and see if they can make them. And South Carolina 0 for 4 from distance as Saxton comes out in favor of another one of the promising freshmen, Leticia Ami here, a freshman from Mississauga, Ontario, number 15 in black. Part of that number one recruiting class, and Coach Daly told us she thought that Ami here might have the, the biggest upside of all the freshmen. And it's interesting talking about Ontario. There's more and more college coaches going into that Toronto uh, area, Mississauga area, uh, recruiting kids. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, USA rosters now being dotted with uh, Canadian players. And the Can Canadian national team is number four in the world, highest they've ever been. So the talent really being developed now. And me here is one example. Helped with that turnover. Destiny Henderson just checked into the game. North Carolina I, with a nice bench. I give Destiny Henderson and Saxton a lot of credit for, you know, young players who are sophomores. I think, you know, when you, when you kind of have a different role as freshmen, you assume when people graduate and you're going to be a lot more involved. And they've handled coming off the bench, I thought, extremely well and been important parts of their team. They're both averaging close to 10 points a game coming off the bench. I mean, Don Staley said it herself. You know, this team just wants to win, and no one cares who gets to shine. And um, Henderson and Saxon are perfect examples of that. Another travel turns the ball over. 
That's the sixth turnover for Clemson. And especially when these sophomores, when you know this great freshman class is coming in, it's like, where's my playing time going? And a lot of people might have even thought about transferring in this day and age. Well, I think even, I mean, even Herbert Harrigan was one of those people that considered it and uh, decided to stay. And a very nice sign, and Leah Boston's going to check back in after sitting out for a spell. Anderson got it. First three of the game for either team. And the biggest lead of the game now 11 points. Another Clemson turnover. Ty Harris with the finish. Timeout. Clemson. South Carolina rolling. And we will take a break as well. 13-point advantage. We are back at Clemson, South Carolina on a 7-0 run. Turnovers continuing to hurt Clemson. Well, that last play right there, uh, the point guard assumed she was going to pass, and the post player assumed it was going to be a pick and roll, and that was a disaster. Yeah, that's a problem. Turned into the turnover. You see the points off turnover, 12-0 in favor of number five, South Carolina. They are unbeaten on the season at a particularly impressive win at Maryland in their second game of the season. Coach Staley said she was surprised at how well her team came out and responded in that game, considering their youth. Robinson draws the foul. Now Leah Boston back in the game for South Carolina. Took a what appeared to be a finger to the eye earlier in this game. And look, at that's not a bad debut. How about a triple-double in your very first college basketball game? First time ever that it's happened, right? Uh, the only freshman that's ever come out and debuted their college career with a triple-double. Pretty impressive. Did it with the points, rebounds, and the blocks in the opening game against Alabama State. Robinson at the line, hits the first free throw. If they could get into their offense a little better, Clemson really needs to find a way to get Robinson and Thornton more touches. Uh, let them, they need to lead that team in field goal attempts for them to be good. Robinson has not taken a shot yet. Thornton just one of five. With the two free throws breaks the run for Carolina. Harris. Shooting over the zone, in and out. And Thornton goes up to get the board. This is where I think Clemson can try to be more effective in terms of just attacking in the transition before South Carolina gets their defense set. And there was an example of not attacking. <laughs> yes. Right? Because Hannah Hank hesitated, and that gave me here time to block the shot. Absolutely. Let her catch up. The other thing that's that's going to be a struggle for Clemson for a while is that, you know, they, as I said earlier, they, they, they lost those three senior guards where you have a brand new pair of, uh, in the backcourt. Spray herself is more a natural two, and she's having to play the point, and Mirkins is a, tran Mirkins is a transfer, um, and this is her, you know, kind of coming out party this last few weeks. Do you think it's easier or... or to replace posts or guards, or does it does it depend? I, I don't I don't think it's easier one way or the other because you lose experience, right? right. Um, experience. Is yeah, you lose experience, you, you lose a skill set. Um, I, I just think it's important to to set a to set a standard within your culture, and that's what Amanda Butler has done, and it's just going to be a process until they get to the point where they want to be. I'm just a big believer in having as many ball handlers as you can. I don't care what position they play, but you got to have people that can put the ball on the floor and make passing decisions uh, to take the pressure off everybody. If you just rely on one or two people to do that, it puts so much pressure on those individuals. When you see the new faces, eight of them, five freshmen, and the transfers that we've already mentioned for Amanda Butler, and they will get to Leisha Washington, who was on that graphic, a transfer from Florida, who actually was recruited by Amanda when she was still 
at Florida. She's sitting out and will be able to play next year, but that's a lot of new components to work in. It's a lot of new components, and I think it's interesting to note that when Amanda Butler is speaking about the nastiness of her team, she refers to the two transfers in Delisha Washington and, and um, is it uh, Neek Cherry, Neek Cherry yes. um, in terms of them being the most competitive, and I know that they're missing them right now. Yeah, they're going to get Neek after the first semester is over, and she calls Neek a skull crusher. <laughs> She needs a, a skull crusher on the floor. Too many kind of nice kids out there. Mihir's pass hit the bottom of the backboard, but she was able to get it back in the waning seconds of this first quarter. And now the shot clock is off for the Tigers. Mertens looked over, one of those transfers came over from. This is one of the things for two days that I've watched Clemson work on is end of quarter plays. Trying to get execution, make sure they get the last shot. Great and rebound. And a great hustle as the quarter comes to an end. South Carolina leads it 20 to nine. And they've been doing a lot of it with their defense. Well, they've had to try to get Thornton involved. That's her, that's her one make. They need more of those. But there you see the transition that South Carolina has to lay it in. Welcome back. After one quarter of play, South Carolina leads Clemson 20 to nine. Pam Ward, Elena Beard, and Mike Tebow joining you. And for Clemson, Amari Robinson, a freshman from Douglasville, Georgia. It's kind of, you could definitely say it's in her genes. She's a great player. Her dad, Keith Robinson, started for Digger Phelps at Notre Dame. And her mom, Andrea Mangum, was one of the best players ever at Providence. Yeah, she was uh, uh, a star in the, in the Providence heyday, probably, uh, with, with Doris Burke and that whole crew. Uh, she was really good. And Backdoor says she might be the most talented player Providence has ever had. And she was actually the most outstanding player of the Big East tournament when her when Andrea played in a game with a herd appendix that needed surgery soon thereafter. That's how tough she is. And I know, Coach, you've been really impressed with what you've seen from Amara. I've been really impressed. I think she's going to be such a multi-dimensional player. Uh, she's alert. They, they, they move around all over the court. And for a young player to be able to learn all the plays from three different positions, uh, I, I find really uh, an incredible trait at that young age. You know, and, and Coach Butler said it best. She says she has the self-awareness, and she's beyond her years. And you don't necessarily see that in a freshman. And that she takes every opportunity, as an, every chance as an opportunity rather than a burden. So that's impressive. Mari Robinson starting since day one. Has the only double-double for any Clemson player this year, number five, and she's one of the bright spots. Tonight, a number one women's team and number two men's team in a doubleheader. Sabrina Ionescu in Oregon follows us against Syracuse, then it's the number two ranked Louisville men in Akron, both games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Always fun to see Sabrina Ionescu play basketball. Talk about impressive. How about she comes back for, for her senior season when she would have been the number one overall pick in the league? That just tells me that this kid understands that she has a lot more improving to do and she wants to improve. Um, I, I'm excited to see her at the next level. I, after that performance against USA Basketball, I'm, I'm excited to see what she can do. Is, they work it underneath to Herbert Harrigan. Yeah, Oregon beating the uh, United States team, which is a, a tough task. UNESCO and Oregon, I think by far the best team in the country right now. Right now, I don't see anybody that's, uh, you know, right there, unless Baylor can get healthier quickly. Mm -hmm. With Lauren Cox out, I think they're probably the second best team. But she's been out now for a couple weeks, and that's a kind of remain to be seen. And then you can kind of flip coins after that for the next four or five best teams. South Carolina in the yeah. conversation, obviously UConn, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and others. But uh, you know, I know I'm forgetting somebody who's going to be messed. Stanford, yeah. Stanford's ranked <laughs> there. Pretty good, yeah. So they're, they're all really good teams. But right now, Oregon's just got the depth, uh, the experience, and, and the run that they made last year will, will hold them in good stead. You saw UNESCO with all those triple doubles. We'll talk more about her at halftime this afternoon as we get you ready for Oregon-Syracuse. And that was a really nice, wasn't it, by Mertens to avoid the block? 
exactly. That we need to see more of that from their perimeter play. I, I, I must say that I love the scrappiness of Clemson right now. They're not they're not making the shots, but they'll eventually fall. They're competing today. Lily Grisette from the outside. Over Harrigan able to reach over to get the rebound and the putback. That shot that they got South Carolina to take is probably actually one they're encouraging them to take. That mid-range, not a three, on the baseline, but then you have to get blockouts uh, in order to make all that work worthwhile. Gordon working hard and draws the foul on the second putback attempt. I think we know what was discussed in that last timeout by Coach Butler. And that's attacking the rim. They've done a great job of attacking the last two possessions. Excellent job. And, and, and again, when you get attacks at the rim, somebody has to help. That opens set up all your offensive rebound angles. Exactly. Foul on Aaliyah Boston. Puts Thornton on the line. I just think it's important for any team that's going against South Carolina right now, considering that they're leading the nation in blocks. It's, it's attack them. Don't let it get into your head. Don't, don't buy into all the hype. Um, continue to play your game. And you can make shot blockers pay if you can draw them to you to get teammates open. It's when, you, it's when you're stubborn and try to fight that shot blocker a little bit, it makes it hard. Exactly. A little bit of pressure from Clemson, and South Carolina turns the ball over. <laughs> and Herbert Harrigan did the usual, my bad, and I just have to laugh. Because <laughs> it was pretty obvious whose bad it was. Do you like when your players say, my bad? No. no. No, I have a gift in my office on the table that's a huge eraser that says my bad. What is your response to that, my bad? I can't say it. <laughs> I can say you're right. Yeah. There's other ways of saying that. Yes. You're right. Yeah. It wasn't my bad. Boston calling for the ball. Got it. Oh, nice feed there by the freshman Cook to the other freshman. And that's what was just exactly what we were talking about the other end. Drive, draw, help defender, and wrap it around and find your teammate. Rebound for Boston. South Carolina looking to run. Grisette runs it down. Attacks. Now Thornton goes the other way. Clemson still has not hit from the outside. Boy, if Kendall Spray isn't scoring, they're in trouble. And she has not scored. And they're in trouble. Boston drew the contact. You know, it's funny, that last fast break that South Carolina had was, was led by Boston's outlet pass. And I had visions of Notre Dame's Jess Shepard. Uh, well, this is the next play down where she just posts up. She gets a guard on her in transition. They have no chance against her. But her outlet passing, I think, is going to be special because she, she rebounds it high, she gets it out quick, and she runs to follow the play. Um, post players that can do that, they start your transition so much, easy, much easier. And she is a true freshman from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and that's where South Carolina is going to going to go in a couple of days to play in a tournament and Aaliyah as you might expect is very excited she's going to have people coming from all over the Caribbean to see her play. She's just a really grown up player at such a young age. She just has a feel for the game. She has poise. She has a joy. Yes exactly. Right. She has it's a joy exactly. for the game as well. And it's interesting to see freshman players talk as much as she does and as Amari Robinson does for Clemson. That's that's such a huge trait at a young age. Exactly, and it becomes contagious. Henderson gets it over to Harris. Stop, pop, and drop. That's a really good, smart basketball play. Draw the defenders to the lane, get your foot in the paint, kick back out. And then a great job by Ty Harris of reading the defense on the closeout and going by. I, I absolutely love Ty Harris' patience in transition and the half-court play. Um, obviously, she's the senior of the team, but she knows how to play the game. She reminds me a little bit of your point guard, Natasha Cloud. Yep, and this, yeah. and got size at guard, can guard yeah. multiple positions. Um, probably a little better shooter than Tosh was at the same age. You think so? She's, she's just patient. She's going to make the right basketball play at least 90% of the time. Starting since she was a true freshman and always has a very calm demeanor out there running the point. 
being taught by one of the best point guards in the history of women's basketball and Dawn Staley. She did some things. Yeah, not too shabby. Uh, now the U.S. national team coach, and one of her players in the pool is here, Asia Wilson, who of course won a national championship. And there you go, just three medals, was a flag bearer as well, and now the, the head coach of our national team. One of my most uh, enjoyable experiences was being an assistant for the national team with Dawn. We were assistants together. Uh, Gail Gestenkers, uh, Lena's former coach, was the other assistant. And Ann Donovan, uh, the late Ann Donovan, was the head coach. We had such a great time together uh, talking basketball and being around a great group of players. It was an unbelievable experience. How do you think Dawn balances the USA basketball with, with South Carolina? I think, I think one of the things that happens with, with USA basketball is that, you know, with Carol Callen and that group, a lot of things just kind of run smoothly and Dawn can say, hey, I want this or I want that. Mm -hmm. And things get carried out for her that when she shows, you know, up for training camp, okay. a lot of things are in place and ready for her to go. And she's recruited, you know, so many of these players over the years that she just has a great knowledge of these two. Important with the finish, excuse me. No, she is a smooth, smooth player. We got to see more of that from her. Fort now with seven points to lead the way for Clemson, but they have really struggled, and now Boston goes out for a knee here, and that's what, another thing. Dawn can just run them in and out. She has such a deep, talented bench. She says this is one of her most fun groups of incoming freshmen she's ever had, not just because of the talent, but because of their demeanor and their personalities. Low maintenance. Yeah. I think that's a big thing for a college coach is <laughs> low maintenance. She, she also says she is, yeah. it's like a breath of fresh air yeah. to walk into the gym every day with this team because she knows that they have the will to compete, the will to win. And, um, she, and she can't honestly put a finger on where it came from. You know, she's, just, she's grateful, she's blessed that she has this team. Yeah, the word she used was driven yeah. for this team. Yep. And you're talking about a player, when she played, she certainly was driven and intense. And is the success at South Carolina has been terrific. Another foul. She says they compete at everything every day. Drills are competitive. Practice is competitive. And it has translated onto the floor. Carolina leading 33 to 17. Don's going to do some talking to him when we come back. Welcome back. South Carolina has the number one rated freshman class in the entire nation, starting with Aaliyah Boston. There's Cook, Be Here, Beal, all of them in the top 11, and all of them getting a lot of playing time, and they've come through so far in this season for the Gamecocks. Well, it's amazing when you have, you know, four players of that caliber that you, you're you going to rely on every night and, and be a top five team already at this point in the season. It's, it's, it's a tribute to you know, Dawn and her staff's recruiting ability, and it's a te testament uh, to these kids how well they've responded right away. You saw some of their accolades, South Carolina number one. Stanford, the second-rated class, and as you see the rest of the top ten. And again, Leah Boston has started off her career in style. Here's one of the freshmen, Ami here at the line. Missed a game when she was in Edmonton with the Canadian team in a tournament as they're trying to qualify for the Olympics. Actually enrolled at South Carolina last January after she hurt her knee in October the previous year. So she is a redshirt freshman technically because they had her on scholarship back in January. Uh, stays with the Clemson Tigers. She followed that uh, college football pattern of, of players coming yeah. in at mid-year and being ready for spring practice. But they did it to try to help get her healthy and ready for this year. Has that brace on the right knee. I think once she gets more game time, more practice time, and finds a rhythm, she's going to be very good. Clemson's first three. Check that a long two. He's trying to get him a three, but that was Kendall Spray. Sharpshooter out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Played her first two years at UT Martin. Pat Summit's on the line. Destiny Henderson hits some iron. Rebound taken down by Kendall Spray, the guard of whom we just spoke. 
She was in the top ten in three-point shooting last year in the nation. Clemson gets it inside to the Aussie, Hannah Hank. Hannah, Hannah got it off quick that time. Yeah, yeah. There was no hesitation. That was a smart thing. Clemson's has played uh, fairly even for the last six, seven minutes. Destiny Thomas, the only returning guard on this squad for Amanda Butler. More subs coming in for South Carolina. Shooting discrepancy, 52% for the Gamecocks, only 28% for Clemson. But Clemson has hit four of its last five, going back to your point, Mike, about them playing better, shooting better. Boston couldn't get it to go after the good entry pass by Harris. Robinson showing some of that skill, but just couldn't finish at the rim. And now Herbert Harrigan running the floor. Big problem, though, when you're in transition one way, you better, you better have both ends of the court covered. Harrigan, five of six from the floor. Flourishing now in her senior year. Thornton buries it. Might have got away with a little travel at the start, but nice finish as a nice touch. Great block. I think if, if Clemson can start to convert, an interesting stat to note is that they have 10 offensive rebounds to South Carolina zero. Um, but if they can start to convert those, they can really get back into this game. And the second chance points would certainly help them. There's another turnover. They've been taking care of the ball better in the second quarter. Boston draws another foul. Thornton trying to bottle her up. With that much of a crowd down there in the zone, you don't really need to reach. You just need to, Thornton's already big and long. Just use your length and let your teammates come down and help in the paint. South Carolina on the free throw line uh, and get yourself in this much trouble. In the previous two or three possessions defensively for Clemson, they've yep. done a great job of just going straight up using their length and forcing yep. her to take a tough shot. And they've been pretty successful at that. Second foul on Thornton sends Boston to the line, 72% free throw shooter. And she has hit her only free throw this afternoon when she finished an and one back in the first quarter. First season opening triple-double in NCAA history. Has some basketball gold medals, great success on three on three, which is becoming an Olympic event. You know, Kara Lawson coached that three on three team and just loved coaching her. Thought she's just a special, special player and person. Harris, good look, a little bit too strong. Thompson hanging in. Only being outscored by three points in this quarter as we approach two minutes to go in the half. Herbert Harrigan right there to clean it up. What a good pace to this game. Herbert Harrigan all alone, but they skipped it over to the other side. Kiki wanted the shot, but it was buried by Beal. So Kiki had her hands out. Had her hands ready. <laughs> I think most of their team could have their hands ready and they'd all, they'd all knock it down. Beal hits the three. One of the freshmen that start for Carolina. Robinson gives it up. And Don Staley calls a timeout with a minute 22 left to go in the half. We'll keep it here. South Carolina with the 17-point advantage as they are trying to beat Clemson for the 10th straight season. Well, South Carolina is, in, is embarking on a pretty good stretch right here of, uh, of good teams that are going to play. Obviously, this week they're going to Virgin Islands. I think Baylor's on the, on the menu this week. Uh, Indiana's on the menu, who's also ranked. Uh, I know when they come back from that trip, during that time, they have Temple, they have Duke, they have 
one of the South Dakota schools who them who are both good. Yeah, South Dakota. Yeah. 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 You know, they've, they've got to stress. They're, Don likes to schedule uh, tough games early, uh, prepare them for the SEC season, and prepare them for tournament time later in the year. And, you know, I think as a player, you get excited about playing against good teams. You know, get, you, get your juices going and get your competitive uh, Absolutely. It's a rhythm. Absolutely. test early on. Yep. And I think they're also excited about going to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Oh, I'm sure. Just I'm going down to watch, so I'm excited, too. <laughs> yeah, that's good that you took one for the organization yeah. to go down there and scout. But you met, there's a lot of great teams down there, a lot of players that yeah, are going like, to get drafted. Yeah, there's like close to a dozen players who have a chance of being drafted in that tournament. That'll be fun to see. You know, get, one of the things that the coach in our league, when you go to Scott College games, you like to see players matched up with each other and how they compete uh, in, in bigger games. And that's, that makes it easier to kind of get a reading on a player. You saw the upcoming schedule. I, I, I would imagine you're going to go to that Baylor, South Carolina game. Ah, uh, yes, I will be there. <laughs> I wish I could be there on many levels, but uh, that should be exciting. Baylor still without Warren Cox, out with a stress reaction, but that should be a heck of a ball game down there in the islands. Well, and it's two four-team tournaments, so on the other side of the bracket, you have Oregon in the tournament, you got Louisville in the tournament, so. Uh, I think Oklahoma State's in the tournament, so it's it's quite a it's quite a field. And Leah Boston is from St. Thomas, so she gets to go home. And you get to spend Thanksgiving in the Caribbean. We get Co uh, Kobe for a little bit of contact. That's her third personal foul. They cannot lose Kobe Thornton. Thornton has nine points. You got to be careful rebounds. right here. They got a sub at the table for her, but she can't foul right now. Good job to get it inside to Boston. You mentioned that Thornton had to kind of hang out a little bit. Shot clock is off. South Carolina trying to hold Clemson. All right, Boston got right in front of Hayes. South Carolina with a 42 to 23 lead at the break. Kiki Herbert Harrigan, the senior, among those having a terrific game. She's got 11 points, has only missed one shot. Senior leadership. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, you got all these great young freshmen, but having a player like her and Ty Harris uh, sets the tone. Absolutely, she's done a great job against Kobe Jordan as well. Frustrating her a little bit, getting her into foul trouble. Well on her way to getting a double-double is Kiki. Halftime, South Carolina leading Clemson 42-23. Welcome back to ACC Network Basketball presented by Food Lion. Second half about to get underway. South Carolina leading Clemson 42 to 23. An impressive first half for the Gamecocks. And we're about two, two and a half hours away from Columbia. And Asia Wilson has made the trip to Clemson. National championship a couple of years ago. Three-time SEC Player of the Year. Now in the national team pool where... Eight, where uh, Asia's former head coach, Don Staley, is in charge. Welcome back, Pam Ward, along with Mike Tebow, won a nat the WNBA championship with the Mystics, and Elena Beard won one a few years ago with L.A. So, Coach, Clemson down big at the half. You know, if it was a conference game, I think the, the approach might be a little different. You'd feel a little desperate. I think Amanda Butler knows what this was going to be today. This is a tough test against a, a really, really good team. What she's trying to do is can we get better? Can we learn from our state mistakes? So you're down 19, but this is where you, why you play non-conference games and you try to schedule good teams. Can we do what we talked about doing better in the third quarter. Let's come out and have a good start. Let's take better care of the ball. Let's rebound a little bit better. Let's move the ball. And you're and you're looking for increments of improvement when you're in this situation. Whereas, you know, if it was a conference game, it's a little different. And I think Clemson has done a great job of doing that and trying to do what Amanda Butler is asking them to do. They've come in, they've attacked the basket a little bit more. They're out rebounding South Carolina, which I'm sure Don Staley has an issue with, and I'm sure she discussed that with the team. But just coming in, being consistent, rebounding, and, and cutting down on the turnovers will be huge. 
All right, so let's take a look now at our Food Lion Food for Thought as we concentrate. And you say shot blocking, which they're the best team in the nation are doing a lot to do with length. Timing and wingspan. Um, you know, height is one thing, but I, I judge players by their length. And you saw 13 feet of length right there between <laughs> those two players. Um, and you got to have good timing, but they, they just close down the lane on people. And Aaliyah Boston leading this team four and a half blocks per game. And also they, they bring Leticia Ami here off the bench and she has the longest wingspan of all, about seven feet. And uh, they are averaging a remarkable 12 blocks a game. They only had four in the first half. But of course they were turning, they were turning Clemson over too. Right. They weren't getting a lot of shots to block. Right, Clemson not getting a lot of shots off that could be blocked. I love that Clemson has come out into a man-to-man, -man, changing it up a little bit defensively. And a quick foul call. Well, the, uh, several thousand uh, Clemson fans uh, with the referee whistles didn't agree. And you know what? That's really bad news because that's the fourth on Kobe Thornton, the best player for this Clemson team who started the second half, has been coming off the bench to start games or to begin games all year long, and that's that's a crusher, man. They're 19 seconds into the third quarter, and Thornton has to sit down with four fouls. Yeah, this is the new rule, so uh, I'm not sure why, but the NCAA has changed the foul rule. If you're not there before the first free throw, uh, that you don't get to sub until this basket goes through on the second one. So you're out of luck uh, if you're not up there quickly and they miss the second free throw. And so Thornton is sitting down with the four personal fouls. I think the intent was to speed up the game a little bit, all the subs in between on free throws. Hayes' shot just wouldn't go down. and retains possession with 20 seconds to shoot. You know, Cord um, Cody Gordon going out with four fouls may not be such a bad thing in that it'll force others to step up to the challenge and be more aggressive and assertive. She did have nine points, but was only three of 11 from the floor. Ball goes off the fingertips of Beal, so it is Clemson's ball. I think one of the other noticeable things, and I don't know that it's just by accident or by design right now, it appears to me, even with all the freshmen that South Carolina have, that their tempo of getting the ball up and down the floor has gotten better this year. Uh, it may be their quicker outlets, but their, their pace is really good right now. That's a quick outlet again. They're already at half court in two seconds. Ty Harris, great finish. <laughs> I would agree with you, Mike. I, I think a lot of that stems from Ty Harris and her ability to control the game and yep. push the tempo when she chooses to, and everyone else just follows. Turnover, Beal, one of the freshmen, gets bumped. No foul call, but she finished strongly. And it sure looked like a foul on the play, too. 48-23, 6 0 run to start the second half for Carolina. Timeout. South Carolina, a great one-two punch with Boston and Herbert Harrigan, the bigs. I mean, they're disruptive uh, on defense with their rebounding and their steals and their block shots. Uh, but they're also just as effective on the offensive end. They have post moves. Uh, they have offensive boards. Uh, they, they find weak side positioning when their guards drive. They're just well-rounded players. They have scored together 23 points which is as many points as you see that uh, Clemson has scored they have been terrific remember folks Boston is a true freshman boy she doesn't look like one she doesn't play white like one it's scary to think how good she'll be when she's a senior Ty Harris with the pick well, left it a little short like a foul too yeah and Thornton's back in playing with four fouls well, when you're down 25, there's no point in saving her. Horton picked up a foul in the first 20 seconds of this second half to sit down with four. 
Now a foul is called. DeCander, Eric Bruton, and Daryl Humphrey. You're familiar with all of these. Yes, I am. Tebow? <laughs> uh, although Dee's been out of our league now for a couple years. She was a supervisor for a couple years. Uh, we just had Eric in the uh, finals, and I think Daryl was in the semifinals. Kobe Thornton, wide right. Beal, one of the three freshmen to start on this squad. There's another one. Cook can't handle it. Kobe Thornton is a bit off um, this game, but it, I think it's imperative that she continues to take those outside shots um, for Clemson. Yeah, I mean they they have to they have to go with her ability. They got to give her opportunities to score. She's missed nine of her 12 shots this afternoon. Very uncharacteristic. Shooting over 60% coming in. And now this is another one. Herbert Harrigan running the floor well and then barreled in to Hayes, who drew the charge. Great positioning by Hayes. Here's the track. Is she moving or not? Well, that's pretty good position. Great positioning. This is always good to see a big getting back in transition yep. and establishing position. And he's a transfer, played a couple of years ago for Amanda Butler when she was at Florida, had a red shirt last year, now playing for Clemson as a red shirt sophomore. Boston thought she got a block, but Daryl Humphrey blows his whistle and calls it on Aaliyah Boston, and Don Staley disagrees. Dawn saying that she was vertical. Daryl Humphrey saying that she walked under her while she did it. And she may have had her hands out a little bit too, but um, those are probably one of the hardest calls for officials is on the baseline like that. A little body. She broke the plane. It was a good call. Don't say that too loudly. Dawn's standing right in front of you. <laughs> I mean, what coach agrees with the call? I want to ruffle her feathers. Mirton's at the line. Her first year at Clemson, played in junior college last year. First year at Stetson for Daniel Barber, who is an assistant now on this Clemson coach for Amanda Butler. Along with Joy Smith, the former Joy Cheek. Dookie. Always good seeing Dookies on this trip. Shimmy Gray Miller as well. Coach Gray Miller, good to see her on the sidelines. Had a was involved in an automobile accident. And, uh, she is back coaching. Ty Harris inbounds in front of the South Carolina bench. And not far from Asia Wilson, who was chatting with Harris as they came out of that last time out. And Herbert Harrigan, who got the miss. Thomas might have walked, did walk. That's a really great job by Herbert Harrigan moving her feet. A big, who switched out on a guard, kept her in front of her. Uh, she's got pretty quick feet uh, to stay in front of people. And that's a, that's a big asset, uh, any post player in pick and roll coverage. Zaya Cook, the freshman from Toledo, gets it into Herbert Harrigan, lob into Boston. She is fouled underneath. Well, we were talking yesterday, yesterday or this morning this is on, uh, about a better high-low team than South Carolina. I mean, they work so hard on it. They, they've always had a low-post player that's been a good player, and they've worked hard to get their other post players up to the foul line uh, to make it tough on the defense uh, to help in the post. Absolutely. I, I think it helps, too, when you have a great perimeter. Yep. A great perimeter, you know. It opens up that lane that allows for that high-low to happen. Um, and also in Boston and, and Harrington, they have their very good passing skills. So they, they have that connection. Boston misses the free throw. She's two of four at the strike this afternoon. I think that's uh, the one Achilles heel that South Carolina is going to have to get better at as the season progresses. Uh, teams are going to foul them. They're going to get fouled inside. And right now as a team, they're a little bit under 70% as a free throw shooting team. And if they want to be elite at the end of the season, that's going to have to improve. 
Martins crashes as she got fouled. I love the attack mentality by Martin. She's been doing that. She's done that on several occasions throughout the game, and hopefully she'll continue to do that as the game goes on. Shania Martin is a junior from Winter Springs, Florida. A really good three-point shooter at junior college. With all the great guards that the ACC has to offer, she's going to have to be in attack mode by the time they get the conference season. They're going to need that. Clemson was picked to finish eighth in the ACC. Going to be a very interesting year in the ACC. Notre Dame losing all five of their starters, over 95% of their scoring. It's going to be very interesting to see the way things shake out. I'm interested to watch Louisville this coming week. He's picked as one of the favorites in the ACC uh, to see where they are in their progress. Uh, they're down in that tournament in the Virgin Islands, and uh, they have a chance to be a really, really good team. Take a look at the preseason coaches poll. Boston doubled. Kept her header about her, got it over for the outside three that is nailed by Beal. Now we haven't talked about Beal much. She's kind of like that unsung freshman a little bit because she gets lost in the, the talk about the block shots and everything else. But she's really got a lot of skills. She can rebound, she can pass the ball, and she's a good perimeter defender. And is another one of those ones that Dawn told us is just ultra competitive. Okay ultra competitive and does what needs to be done to win. I mean, she's second on the team in rebounding. Just the guard. to turnover. Cook with the finish, another one of the freshmen. Well, it's nice when a player cooperates when you're talking yeah. about him, make a play while you're talking. <laughs> well, Ty Harris always with her head up. Beal. Well, Don told us she wanted the three-point shooting to get better today. She's getting it this half. Five of 14 for the game for Carolina. Beal, three of four from distance, all on her own. Boston cleans up. Great example of just not giving up on the play. I like that when your bigs run the floor like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, they should be rewarded. <laughs> Spray thunks it. It's a 10 nothing. South Carolina run, make it 12 nothing. Ty Harris and South Carolina. Firing on all cylinders. And some of their great freshmen are really showing up, including Bree Be Beal. Bree Beal knocking down shots. One, one on assist from Boston. From one side of the floor. Then she gets herself to the other side of the floor. Same spot, opposite side. Knocks it down. South Carolina rolling. Look who's coming up at the top of the hour, Sabrina Unescu, she of the Oregon Ducks, the team that beat Team USA. And they're gonna get ready to take on Syracuse right here on the ACC Network. Look forward to seeing Sabrina. But boy, we have been treated to some outstanding play by South Carolina. Their freshmen are so poised. I mean, at both ends of the floor, they, they have created a lot of their offense because of their defense, their activity, their hands and passing lanes. They've forced a ton of turnovers. Uh, and that's led to all the fast break points that South Carolina has. Yeah, points off turnovers 23 to 2 in favor of Clemson, who has only scored four points in this quarter, all of them from the free throw line. And they couldn't score that time, even though they got fairly decent looks underneath. Last two minutes, Clemson four turnovers. And South Carolina on a 10-0 run, including two threes from Bree Beal. There she is. You know, coaches always talk about, and players talk about, playing the right way. 
uh, you know, moving the ball, do all the things. I, I'm, I'm impressed. I would put South Carolina in that category of a team that plays the right way. They share the ball. They don't care who gets credit. How rare is that? You've been coaching a long time to, to find a team like that, that that's selfless. It's usually a product or a process that takes some time to develop that chemistry with the team. It's amazing to do it, I think, with, you know, that many freshmen who play a lot. Um, it's a testament to, you know, Ty Harris as the point guard who organizes them. But just this ability to, you know, not get the credit and, and to develop it that soon, uh, that's, that's hard to do. And I think Elena could tell you from, you know, experience in the WNBA, team that wins a championship those those kind of things are you know year or two three in the making uh, before you achieve that absolutely it's not only a testament to ty harris but it's a testament to don staley and the culture she's built at south carolina getting them to understand certain standards that are required from them um so and, and we're seeing it get on display tonight yeah i mean expect expectations are made clear when you come in and play for Don. This is how we play. This is how things are done. You know, all the good programs, I think, are that way, whether it's Stanford or UConn, um, you know, any other team you want to name. Baylor last year. There, there are expectations as a player you must meet if you want to play on one of those teams. And I think the biggest difference for Don this year is that everyone is buying into it, right? And you mentioned it. No one's selfish. No one cares who gets to shine, and it's showing. Clock into single digits now. Pass to Saxton, who got it blocked from behind by McNeil, who is a true freshman for Clemson. And I know, Coach, when you were talking about your Washington Mystics, the WNBA champions, <laughs> the word that you used all season was that they were harmonious. Yes, very much so. Uh, played for each other, liked being around each other. Um, you know, played, the, the, the term they used in the locker room was we're playing for each other. And you have to have that to be successful, I think. Well, how long did it take you and the team to cultivate that? Type it of took us, you know, of the process of uh, a couple years in yeah. a sense. I mean, add, obviously adding Emma Meeson back this year was a big part of it. But that's who she is, too. But, you know, you have to learn and grow up. Uh, we lost in the semifinals three years ago. We lost in the finals two years ago. And it's this, you know, learning about your team and, and going through some tough times, too. That's the most amazing thing about this thing with South Carolina. They haven't had any tough times yet. <laughs> the, the, the biggest test will be is when they do. Then you'll find out, you know, it's easy to play, you know, right now when you're winning like this, and it's not a knock on them. They just, you know, we'll see how they go through the next month when they are tested. And I think Dawn's looking forward to seeing that about her team. And they're going to the Virgin Islands to play Indiana, Washington State, and Baylor in order. That's a nice finish. Finally, a field goal. Hayes with her first of the game. I think all coaches secretly want some days where you're not really good so you can have it on tape so you can. Nice catch, Pam. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. She's like uh, that you have it on tape to show your players, you know, here's here's what we need to get better. It's hard when you have games like this. Right. Obi Thornton sitting down. He's had a tough shooting afternoon like most of these Clemson players. Clemson just shooting 23% as a team. Saxton missing underneath, but the ball stays alive and Harris slows it down. Four people touched it in about four seconds on that play. And then you get a hustle play on an offensive board. Kiki. Look at that effort underneath by Saxton. Sophomore who came back even knowing that her minutes might be limited by all the freshmen coming in, contributing off the bench. We are inside a minute to go in a third quarter that has been absolutely dominated by South Carolina, outscoring Clemson by 15 so far in this quarter. Hank, nope. They're not getting a lot of second chances. Harris runs the floor. Got it! No, in and out. Another terrific pass up the court by Beal. Um, they just, they get their eyes up right away. They look for a teammate right away. Great pass, catches it in stride. 
that point or earlier, the, just the, the, the quick passes and the long passes, they get it down floor quickly, they get it to the right people. They're fun to watch. They're really fun to watch. And they, they have a lot of players who can handle the ball, pass the ball, move the ball. It just doesn't stick. Mirton's just picked up her third to send Harris to the line. Ty now with 11 points, four assists, four rebounds. Now an even dozen. And Ty gets a good hand. I know we're at Clemson, but there are a lot of South Carolina fans about two to two and a half hours from Columbia. They've led the, the country in attendance the last five years, and they love to travel to see their team play. I'll bet they lead the country in visitor attendance, yeah. too. So the shot clock is off now. South, South Carolina on defense. Great pick by Grisette. Neil able to disrupt things, but 4.1 seconds for Carolina to get a shot off. Great hustle by McNeil. She's given her some really good minutes since she's come into the game. And, you know, Coach Bullitt refers to her, refers to her as that 100% freshman, right? And I, I think they're looking forward to her getting going within these games. She's athletic. She can go. It's the Gatorade's player of the year for the state of South Carolina last year it was McNeil from Swansea. Good stop there by Thomas to prohibit the shot from, from the South field. Carolina. Got it going this quarter. You've got Cook on a steal, lay it in, and then another swing, Beal with the three. South Carolina up 65 29. ACC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Food Lion the official grocer of the ACC. Welcome back to Clemson. Pam Ward along with Elena Beard and Mike Tebow in a game that has been all South Carolina. They have led the entire way, and boy, today they have a heck of a third quarter. I mean, you go down, it, it, there's nothing much on the on that stat that looks good for Clemson. Um, you know, they, they, the highest score they have is Kobe Thornton with nine, and, you know, South Carolina has four players already in double figures. Me here, the freshman from Canada, in to collect the rebound. Don Staley been able to get a lot of players quality playing time in this game. North Carolina less than 10 minutes away from going to 6-0 on the season. Favorite to win the SEC. The media said they'd win the SEC. The coaches selected A&M. Mm -hmm. Cook with the three, another freshman. Yeah, the SEC is going to be quite a race. I mean, you know, South Carolina's good, A&M's good, Mississippi State's good. Um, you know, Tennessee has uh, started the season well. There's a lot of good teams. Arkansas had a great finish to the season last year and a good start already. Uh, as usual, the SEC, the ACC, um, are really, really good. And then you got the Pac-12 having a lot to say about good leagues this year, too. Boy, that is a tough shot. Good finish for Hayes. I'm, I'm sure South Carolina being picked second in the SEC plays a huge part in their focus and drive. You think that might have been brought up a couple oh, times? Man. I think Dawn <laughs> probably liked it right. picked that way. All right, you could be right. Have one more constant thing motivation. To motivate yeah. the team with. Cook to a me here. Oh! Brought the ball down, and there's a tie-up. Lisa Wesselick comes in, the sophomore from Charleston for Saxton. Thornton back in for Clemson, been playing for with four fouls pretty much this entire half. McNeil still out there. Well, Amanda Butler trying to get some other people some playing time now, too. There's a block from Ami here. Rosette charged. 
just couldn't resist. Two great defensive plays, one by Ami here. And another one by, was it Gordon with the charge? For the most part, a little slide with the left foot, but that's a charge. That's that's one you got to tell the offensive player you don't need to make that play. And Kaylee Sticker getting some playing time for the Tigers. Drew it. Nice. Great second effort. That's Danae McNeil, the freshman we just spoke about. She's showing flashes of her potential without doubt right now. Her mom played her college ball at the University of Minnesota. Where Lindsay Whalen is now in her second year. A little spinorama. Rosette, good job keeping Great it alive. Come here. Would not finish, and the ball ends up with the Clemson Tigers. Meher couldn't decide whether to use the glass or try to swish it and dead in between. And she got no bucket because of it. Thirty-five point advantage for South Carolina. And now Olivia Thompson, the last freshman, is going to check in. The freshman from Lexington, South Carolina. On Staley clearing her bench. Here comes Olivia in for Ami here. So the lineup has got, just gotten discernibly shorter. And Kobe Thornton heads to the free throw line. And with that free throw, Kobe has herself a double double this afternoon. But she has had to work hard all, all and every step of the way. Not shooting the ball particularly well from the floor, but South Carolina playing some stifling defense. And another foul. South Carolina on the year, 5-0 coming in, including a win at Maryland. Their opponent's shooting only 24% from the floor, and that's exactly what Clemson is shooting this afternoon. Well, and, and as we were talking about this morning, not only are they holding opponents to 24%, but when they're shooting close to 49%, I don't know if I've seen a team ever have a 25% difference in field goal percentage between their offensive, de off, or offensive field goal percentage and their defensive field goal percentage. I'm sure it's happened, but I, I can't Same think of a right. team right off the bat that's done that. Outscoring their opponents by over 43 points per game on average. Mertens delivers at the free throw line. Coach, I'm interested to know, what are you working on for South Carolina in a game like this? I, I think this is a, a time where it, bad habits can develop, right? I think that's what she's watching right yeah. now. Is somebody going to go one-on-one? -on -one? Is somebody not going to make the right pass? Mm -hmm. Are you not going to set a better screen than you're supposed to? Especially, you know, this is, this is a chance to take a couple of your other players that aren't playing a ton uh -huh. and point out to them that, you know, if you want to play more, here are the things you need to get better at. And even then, with all the depth they have, it's going to be hard. But you, you just, you don't want to ever have slippage. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to your point about expectations when yep. you go to South Carolina. Whether, and, and you've seen that certainly with Gino Ariema, he says whether it's a tied game, you're up by 30, he wants to see the same things. I mean, I've seen Gino take timeouts in the fourth quarter of 40, as mad as he's been at any point in the game, just on game slippage. Cook now with 10 points. She had 27 at Dayton, including five threes. 
think being back home had a lot to do with that. That's On right. top of her skill set, yeah, right? she's a kid from Toledo. <laughs> she was back in Ohio getting it done. Hayes with the bucket. That was tempting to take that three. Veselic, who does not get a lot of playing time. I love that she acted like, you know, I do this all the yeah, time. Right. And she probably did. Veselic with the bucket. Inside finish. Back-to-back -back buckets for Hayes. As we hit five minutes to go. Clemson is in the midst of a tough stretch in their schedule. Grisette draws the foul. Without it being a front me, don't they have Maryland like next on their schedule or coming up quickly? Maryland is the next team they play. <laughs> Hello. So South Carolina getting all their players on the floor. Alyssa Weselick nails it. Coming up at the top of the hour, the number one team in the country with the best player in the country. That's her, Sabrina Ionescu. Getting ready to take on Syracuse. They are in the building. And by the building, we mean the massive Carrier Dome in Syracuse. So we look forward to that coming up. And Coach Sebo, you think Syracuse is going to give them a game? I think I think the, the, that Syracuse being a top 20 team is going to be up for the game. Uh, it depends whether their press can have an effect. You know, they, they don't quite have the talent Oregon does, but it's also different going in to play in that building. The shooting background is different. It takes a while to get used to. Now, I don't know whether they got a chance to practice in there yesterday. I'll assume they did. But it's a tough place to play. We got a shot of Asia Wilson, who was the best player in the country a couple of years ago, and she was a senior. As that finishes for this South Carolina team. South Carolina been practicing their zone a little bit this quarter, too. Sticker. Getting some playing time. Knocks down the shot for the Clemson Tigers. Now, they're going to fall to two and four on the season. There's a bucket for Olivia Thompson. And there is much rejoicing. All right, you got to love the bench, right? Now, right? somebody, you started from day right. one, whatever, for Duke. But when the, the players at the end of the bench come in and hit buckets, that's a great thing. It's a great thing. These are the people that you go to battle with every single day. Like, you want to see their success. You want to. Because they're practicing Enjoy. just as much as you are. Absolutely. Even harder. Yeah, yeah sometimes more. Yeah. <laughs> Spray? Nope. She needs to see a couple of those go in in a game. Yeah, boy, she's really struggled, depending on her for the threes. And she is 0 for 3 from beyond the arc today. That means she is 7 of 35. That's 20% or less on the season. And they really need her to hit from the outside. That's why they got her, the uh, transfer from Tennessee Martin. I mean, I watched her shoot yesterday. I watched her shoot this morning. She was knocking down three after three. She's been a little bit short in games on the front rim. Needs to get her legs under a little bit better. Sometimes when you're pressing a little bit, you tend to rush it and the ball's a little flatter. And, you know, she just needs to have a game where she can make some. You know, sometimes it helps you to get fouled and get to the free throw line, just get the rhythm of making a couple in the game. Well, too. I also think for it, it, it's different for her coming from UT where at UT, she sort of just stayed in the corner, stayed on yep. the wing, and waited for a shot. Now she has to bring the ball up, deal with pressure, and now attempt to make a shot when that's not what you know she's accustomed to. Exactly. She's of, not a, a natural a point guard. Yeah. Exactly. Living time with Mirtons at the point right now. Scored 955 points in two years at UT Martin, but a whole different, whole different dog now with this competition. It really is. I mean. I think her game high is 11 threes at one point, which is super impressive. Yeah. Shot clock getting skinny now for Carolina. Henderson, the extra pass. Wesselick got it blocked from behind, and that gives the ball back to the Clemson Tigers. And we here back in for Carolina. 
So let's take a look. You talked about the stretch, Mike Tebow. Maryland coming up. Iowa, not fun. And then Florida State. We're in the ACC in December. You get that early conference game. Yeah, everybody plays one in, in December. Uh, and Florida State picked to finish, I think, third or second, depending on which poll in the ACC. But that's no fun. And Mercer, by the time they get to midseason every year, is always a good team. And they were the SoCon champions last year. Yep. So a very uh, challenging stretch as well for this Clemson team, trying to work in eight new players from last year. They lost three guards that contributed mightily. Daniel Edwards, Simone Westbrook, Leah Collier all moving on. Rosette. And South Carolina on Tuesday going to get on a plane and go to the Virgin Islands for what should be a terrific tournament for them. I've always enjoyed those trips to the Persian Islands. <laughs> okay. oh how do you keep from getting distracted? I mean, you're when, when Gail Gessencourt is your coach, really? you're not allowed to get distracted, down. right? Yeah. No fun? No, no, fun, no fun at all. I mean, you get to look out of our window at the beach, but that's about it. But <laughs> A lot, a a lot of coaches now try to schedule one day either before or after when you get there to have your kind of free day. Uh, this tournament's interesting because you start your games on Thanksgiving today, Thanksgiving Day, and you play three straight days. But most teams are going in Tuesday, so they're going to have a day to kind of yeah. see a little bit of the sights and do some things. Yeah, I, I, I do remember one of those days. I, I was actually um, offered a goat. What? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, the people in, in the Virgin Islands are very in tune to women's basketball, right? So Duke coming through, they were excited to see that. Now, wait a minute. First off, that was a sweet finish for <laughs> Destiny Henderson. What do you mean you were offered a goat? Yeah, like we a were, live goat? Yeah, a live goat. We were on the tour, and I guess that's just showing appreciation. You know? How did they think you were going to get it home? Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> They was it a pet a or, do, or, or was it a, a, a potential meal? I did, was, was Pam, that? I didn't have time to ask. Oh, okay. But you did, you did say thank you, but I, no thank you, I'm absolutely. assuming? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> this is Elena Beer. This is her first game. Welcome to the ACC Network. Yeah. Brilliant career at Duke where you were the National Player of the Year in your senior year, beating out somebody named Diana Tarazzi. Yeah, somebody I mean, named Diana Tarazzi. Somebody. And Mike Tebow. And, I, and, I'm not, and I'm thinking probably last night when you were thinking about doing this game, you weren't thinking about talking about a goat no. in the islands. I mean, you just go with the flow <laughs> in this point. Elena was one of the most fierce competitors we've ever played against. Uh, opposing guards uh, did not sleep well the night before they played against Elena. Two-time defensive good. player of the year in the yep. WNBA. Usually that award goes to... The tall kids who just go and block shots, but you had to actually play defense, right? Ah, well, most of her career, I right? was easy the filling out the old defensive ballot. I just put her name on and then said, okay, what's the rest of the team? <laughs> <laughs> Enough, guys. South Carolina about to go to 6-0 and oh, and then head to the islands where, again, they will play Indiana, Washington State, and number two, Baylor. Boy, that's going to be... That's going to be fun. And if you're Clemson, is this a game that you want to burn the tape, or is this something you want to some things from this tape, you know, the, your first instinct is to burn it, but you probably with edits can to pick out, you know, two or three things and say, hey, look, here's how we can get better. Just take care of this little thing right here. Wall to wall win. Boy, Don Staley's team looks ultra dangerous. And remember, they host UConn in February. And a lot of people making the trip from Columbia, and they get to see Carolina win 84 48. Well, this is a. Uh a win for South Carolina that you take some good from and others, you know, you just you, you feel like we've moved on. For Clemson, it's a learning experience. Um, you try to get better, uh, and there's a lot of basketball ahead in the next few weeks against good teams for both of them. Yeah, you know, coming into this game, I said it was very simple for South Carolina. They have to decide collectively what they want to improve on and in what aspect in every single game. If they can continue to improve in every aspect, I think they're going to be a tough team to, to, to play against for Don anyone. Don Staley wanted them to improve on the threes. They had eight of them this afternoon. And we will be back with more to wrap things up where South Carolina impressively beat Clemson 84-48. That's a palindromic score. Okay. Okay.
South Carolina with an impressive 84 to 48 win over Clemson. So the Gamecocks go to 6 and 0 on the season before they head to St. Thomas and uh, continue their uh, what has been really a very impressive start. Pam Ward along with Elena Beard and Mike Tebow. And we talked coming into the game, Coach, about the, the two big players for South Carolina, and they certainly got them off on the right foot. They did, uh, both ends of the floor. Uh, they patrolled the lane on defense, got their hands active in passing lanes, got rebounds to start the break, uh, and got a few block shots uh, to deny people coming in the lane. But they're so good at the other end. They have a great feel for each other in a short amount of time with the high-low game. They score around the basket, they get offensive boards, and they position themselves for their guards to get them good shots. Um, you know, Boston right now, active hands that we talked about, starts the break, gets the steal bucket in there. She gets herself in the right spot, now makes the right pass to get an open three for um, Beal on the wing. She's just uh, a, a great common sense about her game. And she's a true freshman. That's what makes it scary. And the senior Herbert Harrigan starting to come into her own now in, as uh, her, her career is winding down. Yeah, but she played behind uh, Asia Wilson and learned her lessons. Now it's her turn to shine. She plays at both ends just like Boston. Has gotten on the boards, has an outside shot, and block shots on the defensive end. So South Carolina really uh, controlling this game from start to finish. Uh, Dangerous team. What impressed you most about Very them? Very dangerous team. Um, just their focus. And and we've said it throughout this entire game, but their will to win, their will to compete, it was obviously on display tonight. Yeah, they seem to be playing just as hard in the last minute as they were uh, in the first minute. And uh, the Clemson Tigers, boy, I think we all knew coming into this game, there's Asia. She, the fans love her. She's a big <laughs> kid. Uh, no, coming into this game that, that Clemson most likely would be would not be in this game competitively, but uh, what, what, what is Clemson going to have to do now to move forward? Well, I think they have to uh, understand that when you want to get to South Carolina's level, there are things you have to do and get better at. Ball security is the one you have to start with. They, they just need to be a better ball handling team and, and not rush things. they got to, you know, for lack of a better term, use more ball fakes, use more pass fakes. Uh, you can't just stare down uh, your passing uh, because teams read your eyes, they read the passes. That's that's you know just if you do that, then you get more good field goal attempts. Yeah. So, you know that that's the first place I'd start with with Clemson. Yeah, All right. I, I think Clemson understands that they're they're a work in progress, right? And um, I think the one thing that they have going for them right now is that um, they have the work ethic that's needed to improve. All right, that wraps things up from here. Let's go to Syracuse for Oregon and the Orange.